incredible Sunday night. This is Beyond Ringside Live. Nine minutes after the top of the hour, welcome back in live from Studio One on this 10th day of November. And a private joke between myself and a couple of hundred thousand people. Yes, every once in a while, I do get the date right. Sometimes I get it wrong. I, th- I can you think. You had a calendar in front of you, didn't you? Yes, I did actually this time. <laughs> <laughs> Tasha Simone, welcome back in. What's up? What's up? Like I said, it's been a beautiful day and it's been a great night and it's going to keep getting better. Friends, longtime friend of the Beyond Ringside Radio Network joining us right here and right now. He is the man behind it all, not only with LXW, the League of Extraordinary Wrestlers, but he is the man behind it all with IWA Deep South. Kevin Brannon, welcome in, my friend. I'm glad you had me back, Eddie. It is always a pleasure. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. You know for a fact the door is always open. I've had an oppor- I've had an opportunity to work with some really great shows with IWA Deep South and with LXW, and on the horizon next Saturday and next Sunday, November sixteen and seventeen. See, I get the dates right every once in a while. <laughs> IWA Deep South presents Carnage Cup. Nine. Now, for those who have come along over the last year and are not familiar with the Carnage Cup concept, I would like to ask you to lay it out there for everybody. Uh, Carnage Cup uh, is our annual deathmatch tournament that we do. And I started back in 2005. I won't, I won't go through a in-depth history, but just briefly, uh, I was first one to start uh, promoting a deathmatch tournament in the South. And so um, we've been doing this as our ninth one. And um, it's um, uh, it's more extreme than hardcore. Most people are used to hardcore, you know, chairs, tables, ladders, maybe some thumbtacks and, and a little bit of bomb wire. But ours would be in the ultra violent category, which would be like the most violent of the violent, the most extreme of the extreme, you know, I mean, whatever the most violent match you can think of, I mean, at times we go even further than, you know, your imagination, and so we, the guys that go out there and bust their ass every year when we do these, and we try to top the previous year, and, uh, and so, uh, if, if you're not a fan of the ultra violence, then, you know, it probably wouldn't be a good show. Um, there'll be, uh, for you to come to, there'll be one match on Sunday that'll be a standard match, but it's pretty much, you know, blood and guts, you know, ultra violence, uh, for the most part. And so, um, if you're a big fan of it, if you're remotely close to Tennessee, we're in Tullahoma, uh, it's about 45, 50 miles south of Nashville. So, I mean, I mean, if you, I mean, I've got, there's people coming in from New York, Pennsylvania, people coming in from all over to, to come to this year. So, I'd say if you're in remotely within the area, you know, I, I would say come, but then there's people coming from, you know, thousands of miles. So, I mean, you know, if you really love this style, there's not a whole lot of us left. Um, Besides the Carnage Cup, the only other annual deathmatch tournament that runs is Tournament of Death put on by CZW. Right. And right now we're the we're the two the two biggest ones. Uh, there's some smaller ones that are not as well known, but Carnage Cup and Tournament of Death are the two most well known deathmatch tournaments now in the U.S. So if you don't have plans next weekend, I recommend coming out to Tullahoma, Tennessee, uh, Saturday and Sunday. Because normally I would make the statement that if you're within two hours, but an event such as this is so unique. And actually, I mean, having been to a couple of them, the audience is so diverse. And I meet a lot of people who say that they have gone for the first time and really enjoyed it. And this will be my third opportunity to either be at or be a part of Carnage Cup. And I really, the first time that I was there, I didn't know what to expect live and in person. I'd seen it on um, DVD. I'd seen it on video demand from different companies, including Westside Extreme um, over in the um, European market. And I'd never been to an event live. And I will say this. It is 
a completely unique and different style of professional wrestling. And there are people out there that go, these guys aren't trained. Well, you know something? You haven't really seen it up close. You haven't really paid attention. Because I know for fact that a lot of the guys who are on this tournament or in this tournament a, are very accomplished professional wrestlers in the traditional mainstream sense, as well as accomplished in the ultraviolet slash deathmatch category. So I will step up to the plate for that because I've had an opportunity to watch a number of these guys work traditional matches, as well as the hard, as well as the deathmatch style. So for those who say, well, do your homework first. And don't let what happens in your backyard affect what happens when trained professionals do it. There is a difference between what happens inside the confines of your backyard and what happens inside the confines of a real professional wrestling ring with real wrestlers. So we'll leave that at that. And let's take a look at some. Um, before we do, let me go ahead and lay this one out there. Now, advanced tickets, they are still available, right? Uh, that's correct. Uh, advanced tickets have been moving uh, uh, really good this year. I had had a real, really good response with advanced tickets this year. And uh, if you want to get your tickets and save some money, uh, the two day the two day ticket is thirty dollars, and then the one day ticket is fifteen. That's the advanced price. If you wait until Saturday, then there'll be forty for the two-day ticket or 20 for a single day. And so, you know, you're saving some money, you know. You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna come out better, go and get them in advance. Uh, there's a lot, uh, several people have already gotten them in advance. Uh, a lot of people from out of state are, have already gotten theirs. And so I encourage anybody that wants to save some money to uh, get in touch with me. You can go to... Uh, www.iwadeepsouth.com uh, You can go to the IWA Deep South Facebook page or you can uh, email me at alabamapro at hotmail.com and, uh, they, and if you have PayPal, then you can order your tickets online with a PayPal account and so uh, I encourage you to do that if you haven't already got here. And also, I'd recommend people taking a look over at IWALXW.com because there is, um, you get a chance to catch not only, uh, what's going on with the tournament itself, but you also get a chance to take a look and take a, um, get an opportunity to look at some of the previous DVDs or videos on demand. And of course, by the way, that brings me to my next question. Uh, this one, of course, has, um, in previous days, you have shot for, uh, DVD and video on demand. Are you going to be doing it for this one? Uh, yes, I, I will be shooting it for DVD and video on demand. Um, I had hoped to, to do a high pay per view, but it didn't work out this year. But I've got some, I've got some new things in the works for next year, and so I always try to plan for bigger and better. So next year, when we do Carnage Cup Ten, I'm hoping it to be bigger and better. And so, but this year it will be on DVD and video on demand. And uh, like you said, the website has the entire catalog of uh, every IWA Deep South show we've done and uh, the three LSW shows we have all those on DVD for purchase off the website so if there's a show that you want to see that you, you missed or hadn't saw on DVD then uh, we've got every one of them on the, on the website and of course the video uh, the, um, the first run of the DVD as well as the video on demand will be available through SmartMark Video right? Uh, yes, that would be through Smart Mark Video for this one, yeah. And do we do the shameless plug for the people who will be shooting the video? Yeah, smartmarkvideo.com. Oh, okay, I didn't know if uh, I didn't know if Blue Fedora was going to be out there doing um, doing the shooting themselves, or if their uh, Smart Mark was going to have their people. Uh, no, it'd be Smart Mark Video will be shooting this one. Oh, okay. And uh, yeah, so that'd be that'd be shooting it, and. Uh, Y'all never know. It may be somebody different next year. I'm working on those couple of things in the works. So, but for for this one, though, it would be small mark video. Not a problem. I'm always happy to see them out there. They run a great organization. Uh, let's take a look at some of the matches that you've got coming up as part of Carnage Cup Nine this coming weekend. The seventh, uh, excuse me, sixteenth and seventeenth in Tullahoma, Tennessee. 
a hostile death match. A O H O S T E L. Now I've got a basic idea, but I want to hear it from you. It's going to feature the angel of death, John Rare, taking on Christian Cross. Okay, a hostile. Um, most are you familiar with the you know the hot, the movies you know hostile. Yeah. Which, uh, just borrow that you know from the movie, but it, it basically the, the gimmicks in the match are going to be uh, torture gimmicks type, you know, and so uh, it, it's going to be similar to like how we did the saw matches, but it's going to be a different you know array of weapons. Uh, different. Uh, some of them will be different and. Uh, you know, that's uh, uh, Angel of Death, John Rare against Christian Cross. Uh, everybody knows John Rare. I mean, he, he debuted back in Cornish Cup 7 and had the the first saw match with Spider. They've had a few that they've been running for a while. So um, I, I don't know if they'll be able to continue it at this show. But anyway, he's got Christian Cross first round. And he's a uh, young upstart. Newcomer, he's trying to make a name for himself. I've spoken with him several times, and this kid's crazy. I mean, he's, willing, <laughs> he's pretty much willing to do anything, put his body on the line, and and go and pull it all out, you know, to try to uh, try to take a win over John Rare. So uh, this one's going to be a, a really brutal match, I believe, because um, you got two guys. I mean, both those two guys are. Two of the crazier guys that are on the tournament. I mean, all the guys are crazy, but there's some guys on the tournament uh, more so than others. You know, that take that go that extra mile. You know, to uh, ensure that they win the match, not just win the match, but you know, hurt their opponents. You know, first round matchup in Carnage Cup Nine. Pat's Purgatory Death Match is the theme. Yukon Jack taking on a good friend of ours here on the network, Freak Show. Uh, Yukon Jack is um, is a local is a local professional wrestler here in, in Tullahoma, and they, he books. There's a uh, building we're running. They run a uh, show every Friday, and he's the guy. He's the main main booker guy, and so he he's got a real big following up in that area, and so we wanted to get him on there because he's a local favorite. And this is our first time going to Tullahoma. Um, and he, him and Free Show are no stranger. They had blood feuds in the Tullahoma area and all, all throughout Tennessee. Everybody knows Freak Show. Uh, Freak Show has been on every car each cup, um, since 2005. Uh, it's a 2007 Carnage Cup winner last year. Uh, Himself, along with Spider Boudreaux, were both uh, inducted into the Deep South Ultraviolet Hall of Fame. They were the first two inductees into the uh, Deep South Ultraviolet Hall of Fame. So, and uh, these two, are gonna, they got bad blood. They got a, a few that have been running for a couple of years now. Uh, the past purgatory, uh, the gimmick, uh, a guy named Pat Pruitt, um, a good friend of mine. And he's going to be supplying the gimmicks for that match. I don't know what he's going to bring. I'll just let him pretty much bring what he wants. And so uh, whatever Pat brings, that's what they'll have to work with. <laughs> and so I, I don't really know what to expect. Of them. And it should be a real heated match because they have got black and bad blood. But in terms of gimmicks, I, I don't have any idea right now. A lot of people in the southeastern U.S. are going to know these two names in the first round of Carnage Cup. It's a nail-in-the-head death match. Bryant Wood taking on Jay Impact. Kevin? Uh, Brian Wood, uh, suicidal beast. Brian Wood, he's one half of the tag team. Sickness was Spider Boutro. Um, he debuted last year at Carnage Cup 8 against Spider Boutro in the first round. And he come up short against Spider. He's going to be taking on Jay Impact. Jay Impact's a newcomer. Uh, he debuted back at Cage of Carnage in March. Uh, he's a young, you know, high flying guy. Uh, does a lot, a lot of spots and uh, flashy moves. And Brian's just no nonsense, you know, just smash mouth. So it's going to be a Styles clash. Because Brian's more of a brawler. 
and Jay's more of a, a high flyer. And so they got nail in the head. I know um, for what Brian's told me, this is Brian's match. I know he's going to have a bed of nails. And uh, from what I've been told, the uh, the uh, uh, the to finish the match, you have to nail a nail in your opponent's head. And I know it sounds crazy, but uh, yeah, <laughs> that, 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 that's that's the way it's looking like. The uh, the the uh, you have to finish your opponent with that. So I, I, that that's going to be rough, man. <laughs> A smash, pow, boom, death match. Tank taking on the bulldozer, Matt Tremont. Now, this one's gonna be, this one's gonna be a good one. Um, Matt Tremont, everybody knows he, um, debuted back in Carnage Cup 7. That was actually his first death match tournament. He, he debuted with me before going to CZW. I mean, he's accomplished a lot in just a couple of years. Uh, he's pretty much the top deathmatch guy in CZW right now. Tank, I mean, he's been around a long time. He started back at NWA Wildside. Yep. He, he was the first Carnage Cup winner back in 05. He beat the Necro Butcher in the finals of the very first Carnage Cup. Um, and so uh, this is his first show back in several years. Uh, it's just going to be a real stiff match. Just two big guys in there beating the hell out of each other. Uh, smash, boom. Uh, smash, pal, boom. Uh, a lot of line two bundles in there. VCRs, DVD players, Xbox. You know, trash can, just, uh, you know, stuff. It's going to be smash, uh, pal, boom, you know. And so uh, it's going to be, a, uh, I would just say, a good stiff brawl match. And uh, and that's what I would say about that one. The Dead Sea Circus Net Death Match. That can easily be misconstrued, mispronounced by me especially. (laughs) It's going to be the IWA Deep South Champion, Spider Boudreaux, taking on California Death Match star J.D. Horror. Kevin? Uh, Everybody knows Spider Boudreaux. He's... He's been with me since my first show. Um, he was last year's winner. Um, uh, Carnage Cup 8 winner. Um, uh, Deep South Ultra Violet Hall of Fame and Doug T, reigning IWA Deep South champions. He, he's won every accolade that the company has to offer. Um, facing JD Har. JD Har is, from what I understand, is, is, the, is the top. Um, Deathmatch guy in California. He, he's uh, not been around too long, but he's stepped up the ladder, and um, he, he's crazy. I mean, he'll do anything. He's a, a really, really uh, well-rounded, accomplished wrestler, uh, as well as just I mean, crazy, sick, ultra-violent style. Uh, nobody does it better, uh, from what I've heard in California. Uh, Death C. It's going to be a lot of fish hooks in there, fishing line, fish hook bats, seashells, um, a uh, frame, a frame gimmick, uh, double layer with the uh, bob wire on bottom, fishing line with fish hooks on top. And I know that's probably hard to visualize. You just have to come and see it because that, I mean, I, I try to explain it. People say, what the hell? Well, what's a, you know, box with a, you know, fishing line and bottle where well, you just have to come and see it, you know. So uh, that, one, that one is going to be a uh, really brutal match. Two guys, I mean, that just don't give a damn, you know, that do anything to win. So uh, it should be a good one. See, the fun part for me is, and you're speaking to somebody who admired the hardcore style back years ago when it was mainstream with Extreme Championship Wrestling and WCW doing their version of it and WWE doing their version of it. And you really didn't see that much innovation. And this is something that I will say, having been to three Carnage Cups, there is innovation involved. They look to step it to the next level. It's not just garbage cans and kendo sticks, da 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 they go through the time and the thought process to come up with these different <clears throat> weapons. 
<laughs> and it's just it, it astounds me. And you made a reference to me before we hit the fifth, um, the sixth match. You made a reference to me that there were going to be two good friends of the show um, coming up to do commentary for the DVD taping. And one of them, of course, good friend of ours, smooth pleasing. And the other one is a person that has gotten me to pop on more than one occasion because of an invention that he created. And um, Tasha, I don't know if you're I'm still listening to me point blank on this one, but I told you about this before. Uh, Nathan Hamilton's the gentleman's name, and he is the one who created the barbed wire toilet seat that I pop for. <laughs> Literally. Oh, pop. Yes. So. <laughs> And needless to say, when Nathan said that he was going to put one together for me, he said, of course, it was going to be a clean toilet seat and clean barbed wire not ring used. I'm going, thank you. It's going in the studio. Oh, but what the hell? There's no fun in that if it's not used already. That's part of the the draw to it, the hair, eyes, and teeth that are stuck to the barbed wire. You don't seem to remember the fact that I'm actually a germaphobe, right? Yeah, and I'm, and I'm that's gonna... why you're sick. Dude, that's what causes you to get sick. Germs. How do you like hardcore and be a germaphobe? Because I'm at a distance. No, I'm not really a germaphobe. It's just, I was, I'm really not. Moving on, Carnage Cup 9 on the 16th and 17th. In the first round, an X marks the spot match. John Wayne Murdoch, formerly known as Damian Payne, taking on Josh Crow Part 2. Josh Crow. Oh, the part two is is the, the second meeting between. Oh, the two. okay. Yeah. So the part two is a, a rematch from the first round last year. I thought there might have been a cloning process involved or something. wasn't quite sure. Uh, it was uh, formerly Damien Payne. Uh, he's changed his name and he's uh, now John Wayne Murdoch. Um, yes, he he looks like was it Dick was it Dick Murdoch? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So I. I couldn't think of Jazz first name. Yeah, uh, but he's got that Murdoch look. But anyway, he's working uh, Josh Crow. Um, it's marks the spot. Uh, it's going to be uh, light two bundles shaped in shape of, of the X. And so it'll be just a ton of those, just a lot of glass. And uh, I don't know if you, you saw last year. Oh, yeah. Uh, they, I think they stole the first round. They, they had a hell of a match. I mean, it and it was a lot of wrestling involved. Now, not not every match um, has as much wrestling. I mean, all the guys are wrestlers, but the brawlers aren't going to do catch as catch can, you know, arm drags and, you know, uh, hip tosses and stuff like that. But the, these guys just put on a clinic. I mean, they did, you know, had the light tubes, but they put on a wrestling clinic with, with, the, uh, with the glass and, they just were amazing last year, and so uh, they're going. They they told me they're going to try to top what they done last year. I don't I don't know how they're going to do it, but um, that that one's going to be one to look for. I'm really looking forward to that rematch. A match and style that I am very familiar with. A carpet strip massacre, and matter of fact, I believe you had one of those at uh, at CC Seven, um, the first one that I came to. Or a variant thereof, I'll put it that way. Uh, Relentless Ron Mathis, and I will let you handle the pronunciation of his opponent's name. Yeah, his opponent's his name is Danger. Um, and uh, this is a guy, he's from Ohio. He comes uh, from uh, Cleveland, Ohio with uh, Ron Mathis. And they, these two guys know each other. Ron debuted last year, but this will be the first time uh, that I'll be seeing Danger in action. Um, yeah, it's going to be a corporate strip massacre, uh, but we're, we're not going to set, it's not going to be set up the same way that it was, that the corporate strip massacre was in CC7. Uh, it's going to be more, um, you know, more boards, you know, tables and stuff. I think we mainly just did like loose corporate strips and uh, CC7. Uh, so there's going to be more bumping gimmicks. Uh, with the carpet strips this time, so these guys like to bump a lot, and so um, I, I don't know what to expect. I know Ron is Ron's one of the best up and coming deathmatch guys in CCW right now. He's not far behind Matt Tremont. He, he's he's really um, took over the scene up there in the East Coast area, 
Um, but Gander, I hadn't saw Gander yet. I've just been referred to him, and and Ron said, and, you know, he said he was a really, really good worker. Um, he kind of has that Taz look. He looks kind of like Taz. He likes a lot of suplexes and a lot of throws. Um, so uh, I, I'm I'm anticipating this match uh, very much. Uh, I, I think it'll be a really good match, even though I don't know Gander. I, I trust uh, guys that have referred him to me, so I'm, I'm looking forward to this one. And the final match in the first round of Carnage Cup 9, a House of Glass match, Sid Fabulous and American Kickboxer 2. Uh, do you remember these two guys last year? They debuted as well. Uh, Sid Fabulous wrestled Matt Tremont in the first round in the uh, Bob Wire Massacre, and he he really busted his ass. Sid, Sid was incredible. I mean, they him and... Him and Tremont had an amazing match last year. I mean, a bump machine. I mean, he bumps everything so hard, and he works so hard. Uh, kickboxer the same way. He worked Neil Diamond Cutter last year. Kickboxer, real hard worker. Both these guys are smaller guys that do a lot of lucha, high spots. Uh, they're going to have the house of glass pretty much. A uh, pretty much light tubes taped on the ropes all the way around. You know, oh, I'm, I'm saying in the upwards of, you know, 100, 100 plus tubes, you know, with these two guys. So it's probably going to be very bloody. I mean, and, and I would say a, probably one of the more spottier matches of the first round. I love spotty death matches. There's not a lot of guys that that can work lucha and do high high spots that do death matches. I mean, there's just not a lot of, a lot of guys. Most of the guys, you know, are, are fairly bigger. And so if you can find some guys that will do the lucha and the high flying and stuff, uh, you, you need to book them because, I mean, they, it's just it's a treat. I mean, because you're combining the two elements of the lucha and the high flying with the ultra balance. And so for me personally, I, I mean, I like guys that can work that that way. So I'm very much looking forward to it. Now, in addition... I have a question. Okay. Uh, American Kickboxer, the original, Frank Mullins, is a very, very close friend of mine. Um, How would you compare American Kickboxer 2 to Frank? Um, I'm not not too familiar with the original Kickboxer, but... um, the two I watched is, the original kickboxer break his neck and work another 15 minutes in a match with Tarek the Great. Damn. Damn. <laughs> yeah, I've heard of Tarek. I've heard of the original kickboxer. I just hadn't saw any matches of him. Mm-hmm. Um, but now, two, uh, from what I understand, was trained by the original American kickboxer. Mm-hmm. I know he, he's a good bit smaller and probably more spottier. I, I don't know if the, did the first one did, did the original did he did he work a lot of lucha and like half line and stuff. Absolutely did. Yes, he absolutely did. Frank is not much bigger than me. Um, worked for Ian in IWA Mid South quite a lot. Um, worked. Uh, he's also a judo expert. Did a, used a lot of judo in his matches. Also did the Izzy High gimmick for KW in Memphis. He and I worked together quite a substantial amount of time, um, along with our good friends, Bull Payne. Uh, like I said, I'm very familiar with Frank. I have not seen two work. I do know that, that he was trained by Frank, but not having seen him work, I don't have a comparison. Oh, okay. See, so you've done some work with uh, Bull Payne before, too? Bull Payne is one of my best friends in the whole wide world. I took my first table bump with Bull. Okay. Yeah, Bull, Bull's worked for me before. He was he he worked one of the carnage goes with me. Yeah, I really like Bull. Yeah, he's a, he's a great guy. I think we need to get Tasha down there next weekend. <laughs> yeah, she, she'd probably have a good time. I have a feeling she would. Now, in addition to the first round of the tournament, in addition to the tournament matches themselves, of course, we're not going to go into the stipulations on the second round of the tournament and going into um, the semis and the finals. But I will say this. 
Folks, it does get crazier the deeper you get into the tournament. The first round matchups look like and come across like they are going to be solid matchups. They are. You want to be there for the 16th. But you definitely want to get the two-day ticket and be there for the 16th and the 17th because the action is going to be intense and it is going to be hardcore and then some. I use the word hardcore basically to reach out to those who were spoiled on WWE and ECW. Now, I have a lot of respect for what they did in Extreme Championship Wrestling back in the day because they did as much as they could on television, but they let it rip on the pay-per-views. This is an opportunity to take what you saw in that particular regard and take it to a higher level. And that, my friends, is a shoot, plain and simple. In addition to the tournament matches, now you're going to have three non-tournament matches, and um, these are going to be on Sunday, right? That's correct. Um, if my notes are correct, you have a champion versus champion match. The $5 world champion, Big Donnie, taking on the LXW Extraordinary Champion in Red Solo Cup. Kev? Okay, I I have to give you an update. I was just notifying earlier today, Red Solo Cup, I'll be there. And so I am uh, looking right now into that match being changed. Big Donnie will still be there, and he'll still have a match. But uh, that, that match will be – that he'll have, have a different opponent. So right now I'm still working on that. Okay. And what are the other matches you've got slated that are non-tournament? Okay, um – one is the multi-man lucha match, which is just a high-flying lucha match. Um, see Christian Hain, uh, see Jeremy Flint, uh, see Caden Sade, and there'll be a couple other guys in there that I, I hadn't announced yet. Um, and we got one other non-tournament match, but it's a surprise. We're not announcing it. Um, the people that buy the second day ticket, I have to just wait and see. So we're trying not to uh, give everybody everything uh, right now. So if you come, you'll get to see you know, the other matches and other participants. So uh, that, that's what we're releasing right now. You know, I normally try to look at a lineup and say this match could steal the show. This match could be your sleeper match. This match could be the one that it really just breaks loose. And honestly, all eight first round matches have that potential. You could find a person who goes to even higher level in any one of these eight matches. You have someone that could break through to another level of notoriety and respect in any of these matches. And so this is definitely, once again, I was there for seven, I was there for part of eight, and I'll be there for both days of nine, and it is going to be a blast. Once again, I don't care if you're in Tennessee, Alabama, Mississippi, Florida, Georgia, Ken um, Kentucky, Louisiana, come on out. I mean, Kev made the comment a little bit earlier that he's got people coming in from the northeast and from the central states region just for Carnage Cup, and you get a chance to see some tremendous, and I do mean tremendous, and I'll go and throw this one in there, some sick action too. Yeah. And if you've never been to an event of this style, check it at the door. Come in with open eyes and open mind. Now, I say open eyes. I'm going to go ahead and say this. You might want to bring a pair of goggles. That's legit, kids. I'm I, that's that's not me ribbon. That's not me expounding on something in a different direction. I'd say go ahead. Um, the reason why I say is because in two of the matches, you've heard that there will be tubes involved, as in light tubes. Which, by the way, are you still using Sylvania? If you are, I'm going to go buy stock now. <laughs> yeah, I'm using Sylvania, man, because they're cheaper, and I mean, you're just going to bust them anyway. <laughs> uh, I, I recommend going to Lowe's. I, I went to Home Depot, and for the same box. The 32s, they were 20 bucks more, you know, for GE. They go to Sylvania, they're, you know, I, I wouldn't use anything to Sylvania. Okay. I think they're like $35 a box for 32s. And so, I mean, they're like 59 plus tax for uh, GE. Uh, I, I wouldn't do it, man, you know. So I'm buying one shot, you know, it's gone. <laughs> so you, you better you know, buy the cheapest ones you can, you know. 
So I'm buying stock in two companies before this coming weekend. Cool. And actually three, Enterprise rent a car. <laughs> but Kev, first <laughs> off, um, now, so we can't get that other match out of you. There's no way we can get the exclusive here on Beyond Ringside. You're gonna let, no. every, you want everybody to be surprised when they come to Tallahoma, right? That's right. You'll have to be surprised. Folks, this is gonna be at the SWF Arena, also located at 106 South Side Drive in Tullahoma, Tennessee. Check out I, excuse me, check out IWALXW.com. Check out IWADeepSouth.com. Don't forget they do, you can like them on Facebook. There is a Facebook event page just for IWA Deep South Carnage Cup 9. And you can see the information that we've been discussing here on Beyond Ringside tonight. And I just, I just want to say this. I am really, really looking forward to having a great time all over again. Unfortunately, it will be, I mean, okay, with all due respect to my friends up in Tennessee, sorry kids, unfortunately this will be in Tennessee as opposed to Alabama where, of course, the tournament was found. I mean, where the, the majority of the tournaments have been. And I'm just, I'll go ahead and take care of this part because with the advent of the Alabama Athletic Commission and the standards that they put forth, they're dealing, we're dealing with a situation and I say we because I'm blessed to be a part of IWA and with LXW. We're, we're, we're facing a situation where it's people who don't always understand the diverse nature of professional wrestling and want to go and those who want to go in different directions other than the norm and the mainstream, which is what they seem to understand. Sorry, kids. That's the truth. So therefore, the Alabama Athletic Commission in all of their glory, and I will not use another word. But in all of their glory, they have basically said, you can't have this style of match in this tournament in the state of Alabama. No. We don't, we think this, we think this, we think this, you can't do it. And I feel that, and this is, everybody knows I have a great working relationship with Brandon Owens, the executive director of the AAC. But I feel in this circumstance, the Alabama Athletic Commission is depriving the fans of Alabama who want to see this event in our home state the opportunity to have Carnage Cup 9 in the state of Alabama. Like I said, I have a great working relationship with the AAC, but they also know that I'm going to tell the truth. And I will express my opinion in no uncertain terms. I'm not bashing them. I'm not slamming them. Not in any capacity. Because I feel some of the work that they have done since they have adopted pro wrestling under their wing has been good and beneficial for professional wrestling. But in this circumstance, I feel it is an entirely different direction. And I think that they're missing the boat on this one. So that's just my opinion as the host and moderator of Beyond Ringside, not as a person who works with, but note for the fact that I also work with IWA and LXW very proudly. Put that in proper perspective. Um, real quick, Kev, loaded question. Any other, um, any other surprises, any other comments you want to lay out there about the 16th and 17th? Uh, nothing I can think of, Eddie, but, uh, you'll be doing the ring announcing and, you know, doing part of the commentary. So I'm glad to have you on board with me. And also tag team partner for Beyond Ringside. Um, Hostess Emeritus is the phrase that I'm going to use. Mark Mabo Bowman slated to join us up there as well. And you've kind of heard there might be, there might be, there might be a Tasha Simone sighting. La Reina del Pile Driver could be coerced into dropping down to Tullahoma. We'll see what we can do on that one. Kev, it is always a pleasure to have you on board. And of course, you know, dude, you're always welcome to pop in. I appreciate you having me on, baby. Before we run, Tasha, any other questions or comments you'd like to put out for Kevin Brennan? Um, no, I'm actually, he mentioned a few names of a couple of kids that I'm actually helping out in this area, Caden Sade being one of them. Um, he's trying to become a part of my locker room rat crew. <laughs> um, I, I might have to hop down there and see what's going on, really just because I'm intrigued to see if, Kickboxer 2 is anywhere near what Kickboxer 1 is. Well, anything can happen in that regard, and it's definitely, you know, like I said, um, with you knowing Caden and with you wanting to check out Kickboxer 2, definitely. Like I said, there could be a Tasha Simone sighting. You just never know. Ladies and gentlemen. I'll be surprised. Say what? 
I'll be in disguise, incognito. She'll be a diminutive redhead with a world championship somewhere close to her. <laughs> As in three-time NWA Women's World Championship. But she can only have one belt, not three. There you go. She needs the trophy case with all three belts. And I don't care which... Say what? Uh, I'm, I'm saying there you go. There you go. Ladies and gentlemen, our very special guest and good friend of the family, Kevin Brandon with IWA Deep South and LXW has once again gone beyond ringside. Hang with us. We'll be back to put a nice, neat bow on everything. No, we'll just take a chainsaw to it. Right after this, this is Beyond Ringside Live. <laughs> 